this? Sweet memories from deep within. My God. Hidden memories that were sealed away. Well, I mean, oh, oh, I just saw it. You pointed out the Automata UI? Yeah, th actually my UI right now, the life bar and the minimap, yeah. No, I didn't see it before. I thought you were just talking about the, the screen in general. Shades? Shades. Human souls that have gone gestalt. I mean, I know. This is like, hey, in case, like, we've told you many times what you did, but in case you, like, forgot. Grabbers have said since we started this goddamn adventure. I really like that we're experiencing this via Kaine because she's the least. She is the least here for this of anybody ever. Also, these visual effects are a freaking outstanding. Oh God, why you gotta do this? Enough with this bullshit already. You have heard many voices. Reminder that Kaine has been able to hear. All of the innocent shades pleading for their life the whole time. And it's just been like, nah, just tune that out. It doesn't matter. You know, I usually think of boss rushes as being pretty lazy. But in this case, I'm into it. Stop it, stop it, stop it! I kill shades. That's all there is to it. This is the deepest place in your memories. Memories you had sealed away. And this one is your worst memory. Oh. Oh no. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense.
kill you as many times as it takes. You goddamn shit fucking despicable piece of garbage! So what is the point of this though? Like what are why are we why Someone what are we there when I first fought this bastard? Look, why can't I remember? Oh. Oh. God, that is some twisted shit. Why are we still here? To you. Just to suffer. I think we are just here still to. I think we are just still here to suffer. Uh -oh. I think it's charging up its magic. Get the fuck down here, you worthless, piss-guzzling shit rag! I might use a healing item. I don't think I can... I don't think I can hit it there. Uh, okay. That hurt. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay, we're stumbling. Get out, half breed. Oh my god. You disgust me. You disgust us all. Oh my god. We don't want you. Jesus Christ. Just leave us in peace. Enough already. Please, just shut up! Fuck. This is bad. Alright. <laughs> For a second there, I thought that was supposed to be doable, but it's not. Someone said last time, time for an hour of reading. Hi, Farron. When Kaine's eyes flutter open, she sees a dozen villagers quizzically staring back. After a moment, she realizes she's collapsed on the ground, where sharp stones dig at her flesh like whatever, that's not important right now. She pulls herself to a knee before rising on unsteady feet, sparing a glance at her surroundings. The fuck? She mutters. What happened? Wasn't I just fighting shades? Her mind races as her hand gropes unconsciously for the blade that has been her constant companion for so very long. Though she can't explain it, it's clear she has somehow been transported to an entirely new world. Near Replicant version 1.22, Kaine gets isekai Well, not entirely new. Recognizes the hawk-shaped weather vane twisting slowly in the wind above her, as well as the small, round homes with wisps of smoke drifting into the air. And of course, there are the villagers currently staring at her with a mixture of fear and disgust. Oh yes, they are a familiar sight indeed. He's in the airy. He is home. Something the matter, girl? Kaine spins around at the voice and sees a woman ravaged by time. 
Her narrow hips barely seem strong enough to hold her body upright, while the shawl wrapped around her thin frame appears ready to fall apart at any moment. Grandma? Is that really you? Her grandmother's eyes grow almost comically wide before blinking several times in succession. What's wrong, you fool girl? Is your head lost in dreams? Dreams? Could this be a dream? But it feels so real. She's dead. Grandma's dead. I watched that goddamn shade kill her. If this isn't a dream, how the hell is she here? Unless those shades killed me too. That must be it. I'm dead. I'm dead and this is hell. Oh, stop with that nonsense already. Kaine flinches as her grandmother raises a hand in the air, expecting pain to come as correction for her foolishness. But instead of a blow, her grandmother simply places the hand upon her granddaughter's cheek. The warmth of it instantly spreads from her cheek to her face, before filling her entire body with a kind of beautiful light. What's wrong, girl? Asks her grandmother. Are you upset? Do you want to go home? Kaine feels tears coming to her eyes and struggles to hold them back. Though she still has no idea what's happening, she knows one thing for certain. This is her grandmother. Sorry, Grandma, not sure where my head was at there. I'll just make sure you keep it attached. Her grandmother chuckles as she pulls her hand away. Maybe this is a dream, or maybe I'm already dead, I don't know. But either way, I'm not alone. As long as Grandma is with me, that's enough. Didn't I just tell you to stop spacing out, girl? Her Grandma says with a cackle. Here, now, hold this. Hands Kaine a large sack filled to bursting with all manner of fruits and vegetables. Damn, Grandma, this is a lot. It's important to treat yourself every now and again. Besides, these villagers may hate us, but these, the bastards are more than willing to take our money. We'll unsupport as we can, even if they hold, have to hold their noses while we do it. Her grandmother trails off as if trying to remember something, then slowly turns around. But what do you know? In all the excitement, I forgot to buy my medicine. A thin smile wavers on her face for a moment, before vanishing into a lifetime's worth of crevices and wrinkles, causing Kaine to take a concerned step forward. No, Grandma, that's fine. You go home and rest. I'll get the medicine. Her grandmother, her grandmother hesitates, clearly trying to weigh her own need for rest against her granddaughter's odd behavior of a moment before. Before she can start to argue, Kaine charges ahead and, ignoring the small voice in her head, is telling her what a bad idea all of this is. Really, Grandma, it's fine. Go home, I've got this. She pulls her grandmother's ancient wallet from her fingers, an act that requires a surprising amount of strength. Besides, you know how stubborn I am. Once my mind is set, there's no changing it. Huh, I wonder where you get that from. Seeing that further argument will be useless, her grandmother slowly turns and begins the long journey home. Kaine watches the figure recede from her vision, waiting for what seems like an eternity to ensure everything is alright. Once the frail shadow finally vanishes over the horizon, she turns on a heel and makes for the apothecary. Oh there, says the elderly apothecary as Kaine enters its door. Here for Kali's medicine, are you? Though few villagers have ever, have, had ever bothered to learn her grandmother's name, she and the apothecary were old friends. Perhaps that was the reason he'd always showed her kindness when so many others did not. Uh, yeah, if it's not a bother. Shopkeeper immediately sets about his work, deftly pulling bottles and herbs from the shelves and mixing them with a practiced hand. Soon, a peculiar smell begins to drift through the store, one that immediately reminds Kaine of her childhood. There you are, says the apothecary as he holds out a small cloth bag. Sorry for the wait. Oh, and say, that's a fine portrait you, do of, you drew of your grandmother. Looks just like it, so it does. Honestly, I've never seen Kali so over the moon about anything. She brags about it every time she stops by. You saw that? 
says Kaine, her eyes narrowing. Said portrait was something she had whipped up one day after getting her hands on some crayons. To call it rough would be an act of purest generosity. The idea her grandmother was displaying it around town makes Kaine's stomach want to sink down to her feet before slinking off into a hole somewhere. It's like when someone reads my writing from college. You bet I saw it, the pleased apothecary says. She brought it all the way here just to show me. My, but it's been a long time since I've seen something so wonderful. Kaine's mind begins to whirl. The picture was shit. She was sure it was shit. And yet the man's reaction displayed the exact opposite opinion. Is he just being nice to me? The apothecary, as if sensing your skepti skepticism, doubles down. I could tell you really put your heart into it. It was simply wonderful. Um, thanks. Offers Kaine, who just wants the entire conversation to be over. She briefly considers how she's going to make her grandmother cease her little traveling art show, then realizes that train has likely left the station. Shaking her head to banish her increasingly shrill thoughts, she grips the bag of medicine tightly and turns to leave. But just as she reaches the door, she, hear she hears a loud thud from somewhere back in the shop. Kaine turns around to see the apothecary crouching on the floor. Uh, hey there, you okay? When the man does not reply, Kaine moves toward him. She assumes he just slipped on something, or perhaps hit his head on one of the low-hanging shelves in the crowded shop. The moment she draws close to him, she hears him begin to scream inside her mind. My leg! My leg! My leg! My leg! Oh god, where is my leg? Panicked, Kaine looks down and discovers the man's leg is gone. Help me, screams the voice in her head. Help me. As Kaine looks on in horror, the man's fingers begin to shimmer and vanish. He reaches out for her with his other hand, only to find that it too is no longer there. Soon his arms go, then his legs, then the side of his face warbles out of existence, causing a stray eyeball to roll out of its socket and onto the floor. Uh, he hell? Heal? Does the voice... It could even be called that anymore? I... I can... Oh, help. 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 He's asking for help. A moment later, what remains of the pitiful, pitiful shopkeeper collapses into a heap of ash, releasing a small puff into the suddenly silent air. Kaine stumbles back in horror as she hears a cacophony of terror rising up outside. Oh god, what's happening? My arms, where are my arms? Why can't I see? Kaine bursts out of the store and finds herself in a nightmare. Homes slough off the sides of cliffs, taking out pieces of scaffolding as they fall. Screams echo out everywhere, creating an opera fit for hell. Villagers run in mad circles before exploding into dust. Their clothing drifting this way and that as it floats untethered through the air. So this is just a more torture. This is just a slower, more torturous version of the Thanos snap. Only it's everybody. As she stares at the scene wide-eyed, a single thought suddenly inserts itself into the forefront of her mind. Yeah, that's about right, Evan. Grandma. And it breaks into a run, the crumbling world around her suddenly forgotten. She leaps from one piece of falling debris to the next, using them as stepping stones to cross a world that is increasingly losing cohesion. As she continues her mad dash, flecks of ash are blown into her face, her mouth, her eyes. Ash. Ash, ash, ash. Buildings and people all reduced to so many cinders in the wind. Hi, Evan. Thank you. Evan, in case you missed it, this is happening, and we have a raffle. Soon she arrives at her childhood home. 
It was once a place filled with precious memories, a place she regarded as an oasis in, a, in an increasingly mad world. But now it is nothing but a pile of ash. She gapes unbelievingly at the sight. A faint sound suddenly reaches her ears. I... Hey. She's alive. Great. It doesn't sound like she's alive for long. With a, speed, with a speed born out of panic, she leaps into the giant pile and begins shoving it aside. It stings her eyes and burns her lungs, but she continues on, heedless of the danger. Finally, she pulls a small, blackened form out of the darkness. Come on, Grandma, she whispers. We're getting out of here. Without waiting for a response, Kaine gra gathers her grandmother in her arms, breaks into a mad run, hoping to escape the chaos. But the wave of ash has become a tsunami, and before she can make it more than a few desperate steps, it reaches out with a cruel hand and overwhelms them. Kaine stumbles and falls, sending her and her grandmother tumbling into the ashes. One glance at her feet is enough to reveal the culprit. Her right leg has vanished at a point just below the knee. Oh, it'll take more than that to stop me. Butters Kaine as, she's, as she slings her grandmother over her shoulder and begins to crawl away. We're going to make it. We're going to live. As she crawls, her grandmother seems to grow lighter, as if trying to magically reduce the weight of her own burden. And as Kaine continues to struggle, she hears a small, soft voice enter her ear. Thank you, Kaine. Thank. As the voice drifted away, the last, the last of the pile of ash that used to be her grandmother drifts away on a soft breeze. Kaine screams an impossibly sad and lonely sound and begins trying to pull the ashes back to her. This can't be happening. It can't be happening. But the ashes are mingling with all the other... Detritus? That's a word I don't know. From the collapsed village. Detritus? All right. I was going to say basically like debris, like from context, it's obviously like debris or garbage. All right, I learned something today. Thanks, Nier. Soon she can no longer tell which particles belong to who. Come on, come on. Come the fuck on already! As she continues her frantic digging, her hand suddenly closes around a piece of soft, ragged fabric. Her grandmother's shawl. I knew this place was a lie. I knew it, and I still couldn't do anything. Couldn't save anyone. I couldn't even escape. I just felt the peace in the place and I accepted it. I wanted it. That's why there was nothing here. No reason to live. No goal. No anything. This is why I'm... Say. Suddenly a new voice enters Kaine's world. I say, can you hear me? Oh my god. Oh my god. Hit me, Liam. After a moment, the voice calls out again, louder, clearer. Now then, you wish to get him back, hmm? One shot, one kill. Him? Who are you talking about? Uh, for the love of all the heavens, I always did know you were a handful. Quick, call her hussy. She'll know exactly who it is. Though the voice immediately begins to grate on Kaine's nerves, there is something else as well. A kind of warmth. Almost a familiarity. Are you truly so daft that you have already forgotten one of your beloved traveling companions and friends? 
causes something in deep in Kaine's memories to surge forth. Right. I had friends. And I was fighting to get one of them back. At this realization, a blinding, radiant beam of light shoots out across the ash-covered world. Covering her eyes with one trembling hand, Kaine reaches for Do it. Do hurry back now. Here it comes. Here it comes. Hussy. Yeah! He said the line! <sighs> Yo, uh. straight up. What is the matter? Do you still not remember? We got vice powers now. You have not time to become lost in your thoughts. Right. Okay. Let's get him back. Okay, so you. Do you remember? Or do you just va you remember who? Yo! Or does she just remember vaguely I had a friend I wanted to get back? Use my magic to topple the beast. I presume you know how to use magic, yes? Then give us a show, hussy! I don't need your help to take out this goddamn fuck waffle. That was a choice. Use my power to knock the creature down with magic. Well done. Now club the beast. Let's fuck it up good. Oh my god. Kaine escape is Shit, this thing is tough. giving me life right now. Jesus. Hey, Vice. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> your cups again. Fuck your face. Ah, that's more like it. I can't right now. Are you sound of mind, Hussy? What you're attempting is extremely. Cram it, book. I'm doing this. I see. Give me that music. Inject it into my veins. Give it to me. Let not your resolution waver before mere illusions again, hussy. Don't worry. I'll do what needs to be done. Yo, this is awesome. Let's find out. We have everything. Everything at full power. Let's go. Do not oh my God. Time to close this out.
Come on back. Let us finish this. Oh my god, that looks so cool. Oh, Kaine deserves this. Legit. There's a lot. There's a lot being said there. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I already made up my mind. Nobody tells me what to do. I swore I would be a sword. I swore that I would be your sword. Do you hear me? So I am going to get you back, and I don't care what it takes. Who the fuck do you think you are to just up and disappear like that, huh? I'm the one who gets to decide what my life means to me. It's my life, and I'll do whatever I want with it. So quit wasting time like a brainless fuckwit, and get your ass back here now! All right. So we've established that Nier is a bad person and he doesn't deserve this like deification. But that doesn't change the way that Kaine feels about him and Kaine saying it's my life and I get to decide what I want to do with it. <sighs> That's uh that's some feelings. Oh, my. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> um. Am, am I sure about this? I don't know what I, what am I sure of? D is it, do we want this? Is this? I am, I don't know. Am I? Okay, this is weird for me to put in, but, um...
so Kaine starting at the exact experience level that Nier had when the data was wiped, not a coincidence. Extremely intentional. I leave the rest to you, Hasi. What the hell? Okay, wait, no, what? No, but... journey may have been meaningless he is naked our past may have been a mistake but we're not going back even if this world comes to an end because this this is the world with the people we cherish There's... I was actually talking about this with Vegeta, with Vegeta fan earlier because he was asked he we, he was talking to me about Nier. He went back and watched some of the VODs, and I think that. With his sad and like oppressively tragic, this game is. This game is with it, with his with as sad and tragic and depressing as this all is. Buried underneath all of that is a 
very hopeful message. Nier is a game about a world that is dying, a, you know, an apocalyptic future where humanity has made mistakes and everything is everything is on the way out. It is a it is a dying world where it seems like everything is meaningless. But The point of this game is that even in a world like this, where everything is lost and there's no hope of getting it back, if you are alive in any way, shape, or form, no matter who or what you are, your existence has meaning. You're like, there's a reason for you to be here. That's what that ending, like, that's what that ending is about. These characters are all deeply flawed. They have all, they have all committed countless atrocities. They've had tortured existences. The world sucks, and their lives have sucked. But they have found reasons to exist, and they are valid. Existen that existence has meaning, and they are valid even despite all of the bullshit going around in, like, and all the bullshit going on all around them, they still matter. All of this still matters. And of course I got a freaking achievement written in hex code. Hi, Kaguro. I have not... I have heard about some of the... Um, I've heard about some of the... What's the word I'm looking for? Tangential near content from the drama CD. But no, I've not seen or heard it. Oh, is it just Kaine's weapon? Oh, that's strong. That's a strong title screen. All right, there's a thing in here, yeah? I forgot we had these. I guess we could look at the... Wait, she's got... All right, well, we'll take a look at those in a minute. <laughs> First off. All right, is everybody here? Present and accounted for. You betcha. Sure. All right, then. Wait, <clears throat> is this the drama CD? Dear players, the game is over. And we have a special message for no, you. No, I don't think so. Thank, Thank you, you for playing. For... <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Uh, Yona, why aren't you in bed? Oh, hey. It's my big, big brother. I'm so sorry. Oh, I just didn't want to miss weird. this. Try and take it easy on her, okay? Yeah. You wouldn't turn down a request from your adorable little sister, would ya? Popola, Devola, you're here too? <laughs> Looks like you're having yourself a grand old time, sunshine. You can okay. go. Who was that? 
No, you can go. You don't have to be Shut here for up, this. Shut up, Kieran. You'll just make things complicated. We have oh, all the Kieran. time in the world. Hmm. Let us finish what we came here to do. So it's really going to be over, huh? Does that make anyone else feel sad? A little bit. We have to say goodbye eventually. But hey, I'm sure we'll meet again. You really think so? I'm getting hungry over here. Want to hurry this up? All right. Once again, from the top. Dear players, the game is over, and we have a special Please message for you. Please interrupt it again. Ready? Ready? One, two, two. Thank, thank you for playing. playing. Yona was late, but that's part of her charm. It was. That was cute. All right. Let's, uh... Wait, Emil... We're gonna, we're gonna have a look at the, uh, at the special costumes real quick. I think a curtain call is a... Freaking believe they gave my save data back. Oh, the loading screen is a meal flying. Oh my god. Yo, hold. Oh my. Yo! Holy shit, that's cool! Oh my god! That's amazing! Listen, extra costumes can be kind of hit or miss. I'm not always into them. These are really cool. I literally did not know how to change the outfits. Cause I don't, I don't think I can do them in game, can I? No, no, no. I'm gonna assume here that Kaine gets the uh, standard Kunoichi outfit, or we switch everyone to Samurai, we're gonna get the, the standard Kunoichi treatment, that seems. I'm a big fan of getting new loading screen animations now. And the answer is kind of yes, but also no. That's pretty good looking armor. Emil, what do you got? Kabuki's way better. Oh, damn, that's true. He does actually... I didn't notice it changed his weapon. Change hers? Where is hers? This is pretty good, but... Kabuki's much better. Much, much better. All right. So we're not going to do this whole thing because I, I don't have that in me, but such an ominous sight. 
I do I need to see the Emil orbs. Nostalgic. And now... This seems like the fastest way to do it, but I might be wrong. Oh! That's right, Mal, and as we both know, no video game has ever called something the wrong thing. I why the heck I believe here. To who I why you uh, how? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I. I. That you, you. Well then, it seems we're gonna go hang it. out and see Devola and Popola, and they're gonna ask me to go back to the village, and I'm going to say yes. Hey, girls. <sighs> Popola. Hey, this is a bit. Even if you. How did. Yeah, let's go. They're right. Let's go back to the village. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, no, real talk, like... There is... There is definitely precedent for... We're using samurai as a, uh... as a catch-all phrase for... Oh, there's a lot of animations for the loading screen. A catch-all phrase for, like, historical Japanese battle outfit, which we will interpret differently for each character. I am pleased to find that I was wrong. Someone shoot magic at me! I'm a big fan of them giving me the point of no return and then immediately giving me a return point. Literally anyone! That's what I wanted to see. It's every bit as horrific as I wanted. Oh, that's true. I should have fought him. <laughs> I should have fought him. They fired a bunch of Emil heads at me. Yeah, this game, this game means something to me. And that extra end game content, it wasn't much, but I do really, really appreciate. Oh yeah, good question. Where is Kainan? I see a meal, where? Where is Kaine? There she is. No, they're the same. To think that the first time the first time I played this game, I stopped at ending A. Can you imagine? I stopped at ending A and then watched the rest of the endings on YouTube. Ooh, 
Who is that? Kaguro, thank you. Thank you for following. We should go to that woman's house. That's right. Hang in there. I'm I'm having some emotions about this because this is actually the first time I have like full finished this game. I did find out what happens in the rest of the game, um, or at least the base, like the original near, by uh, watching a let's play. And I watched the second playthrough, and I was like, oh my god, this game isn't at all what I thought. Which is something I feel many people probably did. Hell yeah. Yo, I didn't get a good look at her haircut with this outfit, actually. Get over here. It didn't look that much different, but it's definitely different. Yo. That pixie cut is working. Good shit. Good shit. Extra heavy. Bullshit, that's extra heavy. He's swinging it around like a toy. That's way faster than any of my other weapons. Probably because it's one-handed. Yeah, I won't say that there isn't any other game quite like this. I mean, in the strictest sense, Automata is. Jeez. But this is definitely my first... This is the first game that I played. Uh, that may not be true either. This is in the Spec Ops The Line bucket of games that really make me think about things more than most games do. And now that I'm older and I mean, let's call it like it is a little more progressive. I really, really appreciate what Nier does. I love this game. It's not perfect by any stretch. But what it has to say and how it chooses to say it... ...resonate with me now more than ever before. And I'm, I'm up in my feelings about it right now. The music does do a... Are my flowers back? My god, my flowers are back. And not a single one of these shits is pink. <laughs> 